And drama means something, not particular plays, but the entire form of drama. Chesterton, of course, saw this. And in his writings about drama and in his writings about other things, he tells us what drama means. Before we go to that, though, we need to talk about his great friend, another playwright, not quite as good as Chesterton, George Bernard Shaw. <laughs> Don't hiss, Shaw. <laughs> We've got to give Shaw credit. He knew enough to love Chesterton as a man. He was wrong in his politics. He was wrong in his nihilism. He was wrong in his love for Nietzsche. He was wrong about many things in his love for power and will. He was the anti-Chesterton in many ways. But he was a good man and a man of humor and really one of the foremost dramatists in the English language. Shaw, of course, loved Chesterton and said of Chesterton that Chesterton was a hybrid superman a grand transmogrifier of ideas, a tremendous talent who was nonetheless a great force in danger of being wasted. Now, why did Shaw think that Chesterton's talents were in danger of being wa wasted? Because Chesterton was not writing plays. GBS pestered GKC for years to become a playwright as the following letter from Shaw to Chesterton demonstrates. Shaw writes to Chesterton on March 1st, 1908, that if Gilbert does not become a playwright, he, Shaw, will begin an inauguration of an assault below the belt. Shaw writes that he will stop at nothing to convince Chesterton to become a dramatist, not even dirty tricks. And since Shaw was Irish, I'm gonna read with an Irish accent. Shaw writes, to Chesterton. I shall deliberately destroy your credit as an essayist, as a journalist, as a critic, as a liberal, as everything that offers your laziness as a refuge until starvation and shame drive you to serious dramatic parturition. <laughs> I shall repeat my public challenge to you. Vaunt my superiority. Insult your corpulence. <laughs> Torture Belloc. <laughs> if necessary, call on you and steal your wife's affections. <laughs> By intellectual and athletic displays. Shaw was 62 at the time. <laughs> Until you contribute something to the English drama, you are played out as an essayist. Chesterton was 33. <laughs> your ardor is soddened. Your intellectual substance crumbled. By the attempt to keep up the work of your 20s in your 30s. Nothing can save you now except rebirth as a dramatist. I have done my turn and now I call on you to take yours and do a man's work. <laughs> Shaw also went so far to write to Mrs. Chesterton, <laughs> telling Francis, I want to read a play to Gilbert. I want to insult and taunt and stimulate Gilbert with it. It is the sort of thing he could write and ought to write, a religious harlequinade. In fact, he could do it better if a sufficient number of pins were stuck into him. <laughs> My proposal is that I read the play to him on Sunday or at the next convenient date, and that you, Francis, fall into transports of admiration for it. <laughs> Declare that you can never love a man who cannot write things like that. <laughs> and definitely announce that if Gilbert has not finished a worthy successor to it before the end of the third week next ensuing, you, Francis, will go out like the lady in a doll's house and live your own life, whatever that dark threat may mean. <laughs> Chesterton finally accepted the challenge and wrote not only a play, but a hit play. 
Chesterton's Magic, written in 1913, enjoyed a run of 165 performances in London's East End, as well as a run on Broadway in 1917 and a Broadway revival in 1942. We have a sense, for example, that the man who was Thursday is way too brilliant for the form that attempts to contain it. We have the sense, especially with Chesterton's novels and plays, that the forms almost cry out, our cups runneth over. Chesterton is so big, despite what Gare says. He is so metaphorically huge that many art forms cannot contain him. Speaking of large, round, funny-looking people, <laughs> How do I act so well? <laughs> as a pagan, I was doing what Chesterton described pagans as doing, seeking God through the imagination. Mythology, says Chesterton, is a search. If you want to understand paganism, it's the first thing you need to know. Mythology is a search. And the search can lead to Christ. How do we know this? We know this because of the story of the Magi. That's who the Magi were. They were pagans who followed the light that they had until it brought them to the light that lightens every man. But, as Chesterton also points out, especially in The Everlasting Man, the search can be corrupted. And it can lead us in places that we don't want to go. We see this in the case of the drama all over the place today. When anything is put above the good of the human person in this world, it's out of order. When the human person is put above God himself, it's out of order. And we live in a world uh, in which all these loves are radically disordered. And so that was a little visit to one of our conferences. But it's even better to visit in person. We'd like to invite you to come to our next annual G.K. Chesterton conference. If you want information, go to our website at chesterton.org. And please join us again right here for the Apostle of Common Sense. I'm Dale Alquist. Please support the American Chesterton Society and help us make common sense more common.